All right, so we're going to do a couple of quick examples with integrals over rectangles before we move on to uh, figuring out how to do double integrals over more general regions. And we're going to start with this example over here on the left. So we have x y squared over x squared plus 1. We're going to do this integral. Um, so our rectangle is just 0, 1 times 0, 1. So we can choose whether we want to do this as an iterated integral where we do x first and then y, or y first and then x. In this case, it turns out it doesn't really matter which order you choose. So let's see how we decide to set this up. So let's set this up as the integral from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. Uh, we generally don't bother putting the parentheses around the inner integral. You can if you want, but it's not necessary. x, y squared over x squared plus 1. And let's say we decide to do the integral first with respect to y, okay? And then with respect to x, okay? So if you want, like I said, you can, you can put the brackets around here so you can think of it like that if you want, okay? Now there's one thing that, uh, that is interesting to note here. Um, the, the function here, so my, my f of x, y, um, it has this form. It's the product of a function of x only with a function of y only, right? Where h of x is x over, over x squared plus 1. And g of y is y squared. Turns out, if you have a double integral of a function that can be written as a product like this, you can actually turn this into a product of two integrals. To see that this works, remember that when we're doing the integral with respect to y, anything that depends on x is being treated as a constant. And we also know that anything that is a constant can be brought out of the integral. So we can do x over x squared plus 1 as a coefficient in front of the integral from 0 to 1 of y squared times dy, right? And then if you like, we still have our, and you know, we could even do this. And then we're integrating with respect to x, okay? But the integral of y squared with respect to y, I mean, this is a number, right? This is, this is an integral that depends only on y. This is a number, it's a constant. So it can come out of the integral with respect to x. How about that? So we can write this integral from 0 to 1 of y squared dy, bring that out front as a constant. And what's left? Integral from 0 to 1 of x over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, and, and now you just have a pair of integrals that you need to evaluate, and we do this using standard methods, right? Power rule here. Antiderivative for y squared gives me one third y cubed from zero to one. I get a third. Uh, over here, we have to u sub, right? u equals x squared plus one. du is, is going to be two x dx. So x dx is half du. We're going to get one half, one half what? One half of the natural log, because we're going to get one over u. So one half natural log. Um, maybe we'll do this one in two steps. So it's half natural log x squared plus 1 from 0 to 1. And let's see, when we put in x equals 1, we get natural log of 2. Um, at the other end, when x is 0, natural log of 1 is 0, right? So we get overall uh, 1 over 6 times the natural log of 2 for that integral. Not so bad. Okay. What about this next one? Well, in this case, you can see that we can't actually do this product trick, right? There's an x squared times y inside the exponential. We can't factor things out. We can't split it up. Um, but we can still write it as an iterated integral. So we know that we can write this as the integral. Uh, well, now, we also have to think a little bit because we do have these two orders, right? So x squared y d Okay, I've got to decide. Okay, that could be an x or a y still. Which one's it going to be? 
So here you have to think a little bit about if you're gonna if you're gonna integrate, what is the easier job? Do you want to do dy dx or do you want to do dx dy? So let's think what's gonna happen. Well, if I integrate first with respect to y, okay, remember the x is a constant. So think of this like just think of x as being one for a second. Then you're doing y times e to the y. Um, well, we know how to do that. We learned how to do that in Calc 2. We can handle it, but it's an integration by parts. So you might want to say, do I really feel like doing integration by parts? Maybe not. So what if we did x first? So what if we do x and then y? How's that going to look? So x goes from 0 to 1, y goes from 0 to 2. Am I any better off doing it this way? Well, let's think. If I'm, if I'm going to do it this way, then for this inner integral, I'm going to have to do a u substitution, right? I'm going to have to do something like this. I'm going to have to say, let's let u equal x squared times y. And remember, we're treating y as a, as a constant here. So du 2x, derivative of x squared is 2x times y, right? It's like a partial derivative with respect to x, okay, times dx. And now we say, aha, aha, we are in business because x, y, dx is sitting here, x, y, dx, okay? I just have to divide by 2. All right, so if we make that substitution, we've got a little bit easier job. Going from 0 to 2, okay? And now this is going to be, let's see. Um, ah, well, here's something that does get maybe a little bit trickier. If we change the limit, suddenly we have functions. Can we do that? Let's see. Okay, so if, um, if x equals 0, well, if x equals 0, u is still 0. Right? That's not so bad. If x equals 1, u is equal to y. Okay, so I get 0 to y. Um, and then I have 1 half e to the u du. And then dy. Okay? And, and you might worry that there's a variable up here in your limit of integration now, but we don't have to worry because once we've done this inner integral, well, it's going to leave us with something that depends on y, but that's okay because we still have to integrate with respect to y. So let's, let's finish this off. What do we get? Uh, integral from 0 to 2, 1 half of e to the y minus e to the 0. So e to the y minus 1. Right? But we know how to do that integral. This is now 1 half e to the y minus y, doing the antiderivative from 0 to 2. So we just have to plug in plug in our endpoints, right? So 1 half e to the 2 minus 2 minus 1 half e to the 0, which is 1 minus 0. If you wanted to, you could clean that up. I don't think it's a good use of our video time, um, so I'm going to leave it at that.